All right, so we're back, still working on the template, um, and now I want to talk a little bit about symbols. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to my south elevation over here in my project browser, double-clicking on south, and I'm going to zoom in on the levels. Now basically what these are, are are reference planes that represent your finished floors, and these level markers, um, you can control how they look. Again, if you're familiar with Revit, you know that these are not the standard um, level markers. And I'm going to select this one. And if you notice over here in the type selector, it says level cross CG gray. If I go to edit type, right, basically we have a system family of level with that type. And what is applied to it is this symbol which is level head cross CG gray. So this is a nested loadable annotation family and we're going to take a look at that in a minute. So if I hit cancel here, I can come to this type pull down and I can pick quarter inch head instead of that cross one. And what that does is it loads the family type, the level family type quarter inch head, which is actually the default type that um, Revit loads. Now it doesn't have the circle symbol on the end because in this particular version I've turned it off, but we can turn it back on. So let's go to select that, go to edit type. And so basically what you have is you have a system family level, the type is quarter inch head, and below that are the characteristics of that type. And you see symbol, level head, no bubble. If I go down here, I can pick level head circle and click OK. And now every instance of level quarter inch head is going to have the default Revit level. Okay, so what we want to do, if you want to control how this thing looks, you actually have to go in and change this nested symbol, this level head, and update it. So that's what we're going to do. So there's a couple of different ways to get to this. You can't just pick this and sometimes you can right click and go to edit family, but you notice that's grayed out here. That's because this is a nested family this loadable family is nested inside of the system family. So to get to that family, what you're going to do is you're going to come into your project browser and you're going to expand families down here. And you're going to have annotation symbols, which this is an annotation symbol. So if you scroll down, you're going to see level head circle, level head cross, level head no bubble. If you select level head circle and right click, it will allow you to edit that. So go ahead and go to edit. And basically this is a way of just opening an existing one and using it as sort of a, a base for creating a new annotation. So the first thing you want to do is not save over the same annotation. All right. So I want to save this as a separate name. So I'm going to go to file save as and I want to save this as a family okay and what it's going to do is it's going to go to the last place that I saved something which was custom templates but what I want to do is I want to go to my custom library and save this in my custom library so I'm going to left click on custom library we created this in the previous exercise if you don't have a custom library I'm going to expand this in the Revit program data 2014 libraries, I recommend making one that duplicates the existing Revit libraries structure. All right, so I'm just going to go to custom libraries. I have an annotations folder in there and you'll notice there's a bunch of level heads in here. So I'm going to name this level head. Uh, let's just keep it simple. Again, sticking with a the red theme. We'll name it level head circle red and I'm going to click save. Okay. So now I've saved this as a separate name. Now I can come in and I can pick these <coughs> labels and I can edit the way that the text looks in these labels. All right. So select that. You'll see it's label eighth of an inch. You can go to edit type. Right now I wouldn't worry about duplicating this one since we have a unique family. It'll come in with that family. Um, I'm just going to change the color to red. All right, and then you know you could change the size or whatever you wanted to do. I'm just going to click OK, and it's going to update both of those labels. 
The other thing I'm going to do is these are lines. So under the Create tab, we went over this a little bit in Title Block. You can create a line, so circles, squares, anything else that you want to create. This is just a circle. If I go back to Create, there's also filled regions, so you can create filled regions in here. I'm just going to update these. So I'm actually just going to delete that circle, and then I'm going to pick that filled region, and I'm going to go to Edit Type. I'm going to rename it to Solid Red. Now you could duplicate and create a new one. You could do whatever you want. This is just a you know expedient way of creating that. So I'm going to click OK, click OK. So now I have this sort of red version, and maybe I also want to, I like Century Gothic, so I might as well stay consistent and change this to Century Gothic. Okay, click OK. All right, so now we've got that. I'm just going to click Save. It's going to save it back to my custom library. And for right now, it only exists in this file because this is a whole separate file from that Revit template that I've been working on. So if I go to WT, I have this level head circle open, WT window tiles. I have floor plan level one open from my template and I also have elevation south open from my template. What I want to do is I want to get this into the template. And to do that, I can highlight that and I can go to load into project. So if I click load into project, because this template is the only other project it's a template, but it considers it a project open, it automatically loads that into the into this template. So if I scroll down here and look at families and go down to level head, you're going to see that level head circle red is current. So I'm going to maximize. Whoops, not that one. Let's. I'm going to go to control tab to cycle between the windows and get back to my levels. So I want to create a new level type. So to do that, I can select the level. I can go to Edit Type. I can duplicate. And we're going to name this CG Red. Click OK. I oh, want that to be capitalized. Click OK. All right, and then for the symbol, instead of level head circle, we're going to come down and pick circle red. Okay, and then we could also change the color of the line if we wanted to. You know, we could make it red. Click OK. Click OK. And now you're going to see that that updates. Now, this looks blue, but that's because it's a hyperlink. It hyperlinks to this level two. So it actually will print red if you look at it. Okay. So <clears throat> let's take a quick look at a diagram of, of how this works. So if I go to level head, basically what we have is a system family that has a nested insertable family in it that's called a level head, right? And so what you do is you go open up that level head as a separate family, and then you have different options of things that you can change, right, here in this particular file. And then you load that either into the project or the template, and then select that as an option for a separate type in the system family. So it's fairly straightforward once you figure out the system, but if you don't know the system it can be difficult. So the next time we'll talk about sections, which are even a little bit more complex.